I have just a couple videos left. I want to end this course with Maxwell's equations. These are a set of four differential equations that were developed in the 19th century to describe electric and magnetic fields. The last four weeks have been about vector calculus, fields, curls, divergence, flux integrals, Gauss-Green strokes. All of this mathematics was built in the 19th century specifically for this problem. The first purpose of all of this was electromagnetism. So given this historical situation, it makes sense to show you how the vector calculus allowed for the physics of electric and magnetic fields to be described. I want to start with a summary of the experimental results that inspired this mathematics. The list below comes from people experimenting in laboratories and workshops. Once it was understood how electricity could be generated and stored, people were playing around with various machines to see how electricity behaved. Magnets, of course, have been used since antiquity, but new methods of understanding how magnets worked were being developed at the same time. I'll start with observations of electricity and magnetism as two separate things. Note that all the sign conventions here are arbitrary. What observers decided was positive or negative is just a choice of convention. The opposite choice would also, could also have been made and would also have produced consistent mathematical models. So this is what was observed. First, electric charge exists. There is such a thing as an electrically charged particle. Moreover, charge comes in two types, positive and negative. Charges of the same type repel each other, and charges of opposite type attract each other. Electric charges create electric fields. An electric field is a field of force in the volume surrounding a charged object. It acts on other charged objects, creating an attractive force on objects of the opposite charge and a repulsive force on objects of the same charge. Electric charge can move through a medium, usually a metallic medium. Such a movement is called current. And typically, current refers to the flow of negative charges. Unlike electric charge, isolating magnetic charge is impossible. There is no such thing as an isolated positive or negative magnetic charge, which likewise implies that there is no such thing as a magnetic current. Instead, Magnetic charge only appears in dipoles, objects that have a positive pole and a negative pole. Magnetic dipoles create magnetic fields. A magnetic field is a field of force in the volume surrounding a magnetic dipole, which acts in other magnetic dipoles. The field pulls the negative end of the other, other dipole towards the positive end of the original dipole, and likewise for pulling the positive end towards the negative end. The previous list summarized the observations about electricity and magnetism by themselves. But perhaps the most important observation was the fact that electricity and magnetism interact. Even more, the interaction happened in some very strange and unexpected ways. So here is a list of the various interactions that were observed. A current, a moving electric charge through a wire, creates a magnetic field, and the direction of this field is circular, moving around the while, wire. The direction of the current and the direction of the rotation agree by a right-hand rule, and the right-hand rule is the result of the various sign conventions. Again, different choices of positive and negative charge, positive and negative ends of a magnet, so forth, might have led to a left-hand rule. As an application of the previous point, if the wire is wrapped into a solenoid, that is a ring of coiled wire, it creates a magnetic field inside the solenoid, and the direction of this mag magnetic field is pointing straight through the ring, again, following a right-handed rule, for the direction of the field and the direction of the rotation current in the ring. A changing magnetic field produced, say, by spinning a magnet, and thus moving the resulting magnetic field, produces an electric field, and thus an electric force on nearby electrically charged particles. Magnetic fields act only on moving charged particles and induce torque to change the direction of movement. And a key piece in all of these interactions is change or movement. A static electric field doesn't do anything to a stationary magnet, and likewise a stationary magnet doesn't have any effect on a sta stationary electrically charged object. It's only when something is changing, when the magnetic field is changing, when the charge is moving in a current, that the interactions happen. The interactions between electricity and magnetism are all dynamics. Now I'm going to try and take the observation from the previous two lists and describe them in a mathematical model. 
I'm going to use all the tools of this course, but remember, when this was first done, the tools had to be invented. That's where all of this stuff came from. So, first let me describe the model for a static situation. Isolated electric charges exist. If there's a charge at a point, I can just attach a value to that point. Q is the conventional letter for charge, and it has units of coulombs. In the SI system, coulombs are a derived unit since it was decided that current should be the fundamental unit. So coulomb is the same as amp second, which is written A dot S. In addition to point charges, often there is a distribution of charge in a region, and this can be called a charge density, which is a scalar field rho. Charge density has units of coulombs per cubic meter, C over m meter cubed, or amp seconds per cubic meter, AS over m cubed. Electric charge, either a point charge or a distribution of charge in a region, creates a field E of force per unit charge. The field acts on other potential charges in the region around the existing charge. The field has units of volts per meter, and again in the SI system a volt is a derived unit, and the base units for electric fields are kilogram meters over second cubed amps. In addition to charge, the flow of charge and current exists. This is usually described by a current density J, which describes the current flowing through a cross-sectional area. J has units of coulombs per second square meter, and in SI units, that's amps over meters squared. There is a universal constant which determines the strength of the interaction due to electric fields. This constant is called the permittivity of the vacuum and has the value epsilon naught equals 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12, with units s to the 4 a squared over m cubed kilograms. If a charge density rho is creating an electric field, the relationship between the charge density and the field is given by the divergence differential operator. Nabla dot E equals rho over epsilon zero, and that's why we needed all these things defined, including epsilon, to write down this differential operator and this differential equation. Moving on, isolated magnetic charge does not exist, so no symbols or units are assigned to it but a magnetic dipole does create a force B. Following the observation, this force acts on moving electrically charged particles by changing its direction of movement. Therefore, it's natural to describe this force as a force per charge velocity. The units of B is the Tesla, which in SI units is kilograms over amps seconds squared. There again is a universal constant that describes the strength of magnetic field interactions. This constant is called the permeability of the vacuum and has value of mu naught equals 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7, with units meters kilograms over seconds squared amps squared. This universal constant is not independent of the other constants. It is, in fact, a derived value, and this explains why it has a value involving pi instead of just some arbitrary decimal. Since there are no monopoles, all magnetic charge is balanced. And this is reflected by the differential equation, nabla times b equals zero, in contrast with the electric situation where nabla times b, nabla times e, or nabla dot e could be non-zero. In this case, nabla dot b is zero. Now I need to model the changing electric magnetic fields. A key part of the observation um, is that change in electric fields produces magnetic fields and vice versa. As I said before, it's all about dynamics. Well, how is this described mathematically? A change in electric field induces a magnetic field and vice versa, and also a current induces a magnetic field. These are the things that have been observed. Magnetic current is impossible, so it's not part of this equation. Well, what is the induced field? The induced field due to a changing field satisfies a differential equation again, this time using the cross product. The induced electric field due to a changing magnetic field satisfies nabla cross E is the negative time derivative of the changing field. Notice we have a time derivative here. If the field is not changing, then nothing is induced. And very similarly, both a current and a change in electric field induce a magnetic field, and that magnetic field satisfies nabla cross B is mu naught times the current density 
plus mu dot epsilon times the time derivative of E. Again, noting that we need a time derivative here. If there is no current and a field is electric field is not changing, then it will not induce any magnetic field. All right. <laughs> In this mathematical model, I've written down four differential equations. These are Maxwell's equations. There are four equations, two for statics, the ones with the dot product, and they calculate the divergence of fields, two for dynamics with a cross product that calculate the curl of fields. Without fields, curl, divergence, these differential equations are just impossible to state. Therefore, the concepts of vector fields, of curl and divergence, needed to be invented in order to be able to state the fundamental equations that govern electricity and magnetism. To determine the time behavior of an electromagnetic system means solving these four differential equations for whatever initial conditions describe the system. This is in general a very difficult problem, but at least it is now a problem that has mathematical tools to describe it. This is the purpose of all of these tools, even though they've been used for all sorts of other things since. They were invented to write down these equations, to have something to use to describe what was going on with electricity and with magnetism.